So you want to go to the University of Pennsylvania. Well, I'm here to help you do it. My name is Craig Meister. You can learn more about me and my one-on-one -on -one college application coaching services over at my website, collegemeister.com. Again, that's collegemeister.com. But today we are going to dive right into how to get into Penn, which is in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And yours truly is an alumnus of the University of Pennsylvania. Back in the day, I went to Penn and I majored in history and I specialized in diplomatic history. And that has caused me to be a very diplomatic individual to this very day. Tip number one, below this video, there's a link to my classic article, How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically. I want you to read that article from start to finish and carefully, because if you can do everything that article is instructing you to do, not just in your 12th grade year, but in your 9th grade year, 10th grade year, and 11th grade year, in the summers between each year in high school, you are going to walk into the first day of your senior year, your 12th grade year in high school, very well positioned to earn your way into Penn as a high school senior. Again, that article is chock full of information that is very valuable to you. So definitely make sure that you put that on your reading list the moment you finish watching this video today. Tip number two relates a little bit to that video in greater depth, but specifically for the 2023-2024 admission cycle, I would highly recommend that you consider not submitting your SAT scores to Penn unless they are 1470 or higher or the equivalent on the ACT. Now, again, this is a case-by-case -case situation, and I would definitely recommend you get my one-on-one -on -one support to be absolutely certain that your SAT scores in the context of your essay writing skills, in, in the context of your transcript, in the context of your extracurricular resume, which we'll talk about in a few moments, will hurt you or help you before you decide definitively whether or not you want to submit those scores or not. Because in an SAT optional environment, you don't want to submit anything that could be a net negative for your application. So again, that's building upon my tip number one related to your actual SAT scores and whether or not you should submit them or not. My generic rule of thumb for the 2023-2024 admission cycle would be if you're above a 1470, probably can send them. If you're below a 1470, you know, probably not. But again, it's a case-by-case -case situation. If you're anywhere between really 1,400 and 1,500, uh, you would want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one to be absolutely sure that in the context of your pros and cons, it's a wise decision for you to submit your SAT or ACT scores to the University of Pennsylvania. My next tip specifically relates to University of Pennsylvania's admissions options. They offer two, early decision and regular decision. If you are serious about Penn, if it is your first choice school, and you are not worried about the financial implications of getting a financial aid package that could not be one that your family enjoys seeing or reading, then I would definitely recommend applying to Penn Early Decision because your chances statistically of getting into Penn go up threefold if you apply and get an early decision as opposed to if you apply and God knows you probably won't get in regular decision because the acceptance rate plummets. Uh, now, do kids get in regular decision at Penn? Of course they do. But the chances of getting in, again, are three times higher usually, maybe two times if it's a very competitive year, but really three times consistently higher for regular for early decision applicants than they are for regular decision applicants. So if you're in it to win it, if you want to go to Penn, if it's your first choice school, seriously consider applying early decision to Penn. November 1 deadline, you will hear by December 15th of whether or not you've been accepted or not to Penn. And what a wonderful winter break gift or New Year's gift that would be to get into Penn halfway through your 12th grade year in high school. If you apply regular decision, it's sort of like uh, swimming with the sharks. You really don't know what will happen as a result of the regular decision process. And uh, it's somewhat like a lottery to some extent. You could have the best application possible, but because there are so many other students applying regular decision, you put yourself at a great statistical disadvantage of getting in. But of course, kids still do get in regular, but why risk it if Penn is your first choice? My next tip has to do with the Penn supplement to the common application, which is mo the way most students will be applying to Penn through the common application. They'll 
Pen does allow you to apply it a couple different ways, but they are much less popular than through the Common App. So on the Common Application, Pen does allow on its writing supplement uh, for you to upload something known as an extracurricular resume. Now, many very high achieving students never even consider doing this. They just fill out the activities portion of the common application and they call it a day. But if you are a typical pen applicant, you probably have much more that you could or should be saying about your extracurricular exploits than that will fit on the very skeletal activities page of the common portion of the common application. Therefore, for you, submitting an actual uh, extracurricular resume to the pen supplement makes so much sense because you will then have the space to elaborate on and provide the depth and breadth of context necessary for the pen admissions officers to really understand who you have been outside the classroom since the summer before ninth grade. So I want you to put together an extraordinary extracurricular resume in order to best compete with the other students applying to Penn this and in future admission cycles if you are watching it in the future. So how did you do that? Well, I strongly recommend that you purchase, which is linked below my video, my very short course called How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. It has stood the test of time. I have not really changed this course since uh, basically 2014, 2015, because it is so valuable and it is so clear and it is only an hour, it's less than an hour in length that uh, if you watch it in all of its uh, chapters, if you will, you are going to be in the very best position to develop, draft, and ultimately upload to the pen supplement to the common application an extraordinary extracurricular resume that is going to differentiate your extracurricular experiences in just the right way, in just the right manner, uh, so as to further improve your shot of getting into pen. It's not just about the content you put on the resume, it's also about the way you format it so that it's very clear to the admissions officers who want to read a little bit of it or who want to read a lot of it, uh, and you're going to be providing them all the information they need to really make the right choice about your application vis-a-vis -vis what you've been doing outside the classroom. This is a huge way in which you can differentiate yourself. So again, I strongly recommend you take pen up on its optional resume upload on its supplement. If you don't, I think you're really skating on thin ice, you're just risking it too much to assume that the activities page of the common application, which only allows you so many characters per entry, is going to really be able to serve you as well as a resume could. A resume even is a wonderful option, but many students fail on uploading the resume because they upload a very prosaic, boring sort of template resume and try to fit their unique experiences into a template. Instead, my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course teaches how you how you can develop a resume from scratch that will really put the things that differentiate you front and center from top to bottom on your final resume that you will upload. So again, I highly recommend that you purchase that How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course, which is linked below this video. And then my next tip has to do with the pen essays, pen specific essays on the pen supplement to the common application. I should just note at this point, I'm not going to speak today about the actual common application essay, but of course, pen requires that as well. So if you're applying on the common application, you certainly want to take the time necessary to draft out a beautiful uh, common app essay. Now, how to do that? I have put out some free videos in the past about uh, some pitfalls. Many very smart students like you make when developing their uh, common app essay. And I've also put out some videos in the past deeply analyzing the most strategic and wisest common app prompts to respond to, as well as the most popular common app prompts uh, in any given year. All of those videos are linked below this video. So if you do want to uh, peruse those in your free time and re watch those very carefully, I definitely recommend doing so because those are gonna give you some more knowledge necessary to really knock the common app essay out of the park. But because that is a whole other topic for a whole other day, I'm not gonna speak about it again in this video, but of course it's extremely important in terms of helping you get into pen because the common app essay is the longest essay you will be submitting to pen because what we're going to talk about right now are the pen supplemental essays, which are important. Don't get me wrong. They are sort of your closing argument to pen. However, 
they are not nearly as long as the Common App Essay that you will be writing, which you can write up to 650 words on the Common App Essay, whereas on the Penn Supplemental Essays, you only have 200 words each, and you only can fill out three of them if you are applying to one of the three or four schools, undergraduate schools at Penn. Now, I should just give you a little asterisk point at this point. I'm not going to talk about the essays for very special programs, um, you know, the programs uh, that are specific, you know, to the... Uh, double matriculation between, let's say, engineering and, and warden or some of these other very high-end programs. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them today at all because for something like that, you would definitely want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Those are very specific programs, very competitive programs. Instead, we're going to be talking about the four main schools that most typical applicants will apply to when they're applying to Penn as a first-year applicant, which include, of course, the Warden School of Business, the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering, and also the School of Nursing. All right, so let's talk about the essays. We're going to talk about uh, one, two, uh, plus four essays total because this year Penn actually has one specific essay depending on the school that is your first choice school. Um, and they also have two essays that are not dependent on the school you're applying to. So let's dive right in to the Penn Supplemental Prompts for the 2023-2024 admissions cycle. Number one is a holdover from last year. Write a short thank you note to someone you have not yet thanked and would like to acknowledge. And then, of course, they say we encourage you to share this note with that person if possible and reflect on the experience. But that parenthetical thought or comment is not a part of what you need to be writing about. So you don't need to reflect on what they reacted to this, how they reacted to the note in your response, because that's neither here nor there. Instead, you really just want to zero in on uh, producing for the Penn Admissions Committee or the Penn Admissions Officers Reviewing your application, uh, what a short thank you note would look like if you wrote it to someone that you have not yet thanked but would like to acknowledge. So how do you do this one? Well, you only have 200 words, and unlike a typical essay, you're not going to have a thesis with a body and then a conclusion. Instead, you're going to have basically a short note, and many people have forgotten how to write a short note because everyone is just sending memes and short texts on different programs like WhatsApp or Snapchat or, Ch 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 or what have you. Um, and so let's remember how to write a little note or a little, a little letter, if you will. Uh, you can say, dear, and then give their name. If it's someone who is older than you, you should probably say, dear Mr. or Mrs. or doctor, you know, to show respect. Uh, but if it's someone else that you love or is close to you, like a brother, a sister, or a, a family friend that's, you know, close in age to you or something, you can always use their first name, like dear John or dear Emily or dear Sam, but I would definitely start your response by saying dear, and then their name, comma, then the next paragraph is the beginning of the letter. And this is, again, a short thank you note, where you are thanking them for doing something that you feel like they need to know about, uh, that, that you really appreciate, uh, whether it be something they've done recently or something they've done in the past, Really, the world is your oyster here, but this is an opportunity for you to show appreciation. And Penn really wants to see that in their applicants to someone who has helped you all along your life's journey. Uh, does it have to do with academics? No, it does not. It could be having to do with anything whatsoever. Uh, maybe someone gave you an opportunity in first grade that opened up a whole new world to you. Uh, maybe someone uh, saved your life this past summer when you were swimming out in the Atlantic Ocean and you want to sort of relay what you were thinking when you were drowning and when, what you were thinking when they saved you and how thankful you are that they saved you. Whatever the case may be, uh, this is your opportunity to write in a sort of a genre of a personal letter, uh, a very short note. Again, you only have 200 words total, uh, sort of explaining the context of why you are thanking them and why it is meaningful to you. So... You know, it's not just a matter of saying, thank you so much for introducing me to robotics in sixth grade as my robotics teacher. Uh, that was really cool. You have to sort of explain how have you been a different person since? How has that opened doors up to you that has sort of elucidated for you or clarified for you, uh, excuse me, your, uh, you know, your path forward? Uh, and you might, if you're a very talented writer, even have some real estate left by the last few sentences of your response to say something like, because of you, I'm on the cusp of, you know, applying, I'm applying to Penn for STEM. You know, if you're talking about robotics, 
Uh, and it wouldn't have been something I would ever have considered or gotten so deeply involved in had it not been for that first exposure to robotics in sixth grade because of you. You know, so again, it's sort of full circle story and sort of trying to make the connections for the admissions officers so that they can see that you understand that small acts of kindness can develop into very big trajectory altering moments in our life. Uh, but even if something didn't happen that was trajectory altering or perspective altering for you, but if it's something that you feel like you want to thank someone for, you could also write a short but sweet thank you letter to that person as well. So again, you can only pick one person. It has to be a real person and someone that you can really write contextually a thoughtful letter to. And then in, you con in your conclusion, of course, you would definitely want to say sincerely in your name. Uh, you, you do want to at least use three words for that. Sincerely, comma, and then your first name and your last name. So again, you're in, a, in the genre of writing of an actual note or, or letter. Um, so keep, keep the theme going all the way to the end. Prompt number two, how will you explore community at Penn? Consider how Penn will help shape your perspective and how your experiences and perspective will shape Penn. I actually love this prompt. I just wish they gave you 650 words to respond to it because students who are really serious about Penn could definitely write a final draft of 650 words. And back in the day, Penn, in fact, did have a 650-word essay, only one, on their, on their uh, supplement. But times have changed for a lot of different reasons. They've gone this direction. So you only have 200 words with which to respond to how will you explore community at Penn, consider how Penn will help, help shape your perspective, and how your experiences and perspective will help shape Penn. This is sort of the why Penn essay separate and apart from the academics, because you're going to be asked about academics shortly in your, um, your next essay. Uh, but this is your chance to sort of discuss uh, the things that are drawing you to Penn and the things from your past that are making that, that connection really resonate with you. So for instance, you know, if you are, are really attracted to Penn because of some club or music group that they have on campus, then you can, of course, and you should, of course, mention that club or music group and why it resonates with you and, and, and paint a picture of how you will engage with it on Penn's campus. But part and parcel of that is showing from your past proof that this really would resonate with you. Now, maybe you've already done that objectively speaking in your resume where you've described objectively a music club you've already been a part of, but you need to share sort of the more emotive or subjective elements of the connections you see between your past music club experience, let's say, and this particular music club at Penn and why you feel like they're, they really align beautifully in terms of mission, in terms of philosophy, uh, and how there's a, a really unique niche in this music club at Penn that maybe Penn that does not exist at uh, I, other Ivy League schools that have music clubs as well. This music club in particular is really unique to Penn and, and the offerings available to you. Again, I am making this up. I do not know if there's a music club at Penn. Of course, there is Mask and Wig, which is sort of like a comedy troupe slash music. Uh, in any case, there's a lot of different acapella groups at Penn, of course. Um, but you get my point. You got to really get in the weeds. You got to really get specific with describing in this particular response pen specific attributes that are drawing you to the university and also use as support your current and or past behaviors that would, uh, would prove your point that you're not just pulling this out of a hat. This is something that really connects to your past and present behaviors that would make them really see that there's a very straight line between who you are today and who you see yourself developing into at Penn. How would I structure this? You want to have a one sentence intro slash thesis where you introduce uh, in particular the one to two to three max um, things at Penn that will help shape your perspective. And in the body is where you will then explain how your experiences and perspectives will help shape Penn and those particular uh, particular things that you're most excited about at Penn. So it, it is somewhat of a juggling act here 
Um, but you need to be able to really, uh, I think in the first sentence, show the things that are drawing you to pen, um, you know, name them, you know, this club, this part of its location is really attractive to you. Um, you know, maybe you say Penn's location, Penn's diversity, and the opportunity to be in this music club. I'm just making this up. These three examples in my example uh, are what you know, are are. Uh, I'm so excited for those things to shape my 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 time at Penn. Then in the body, you're going to explain why drawing on your past experiences and your current perspective those things really resonate with you. And in so doing, you're going to be showing how you can provide value added to the diversity of Penn, provide value added to the music club you picked at Penn, and provide value added to the location that you feel like is so critical to help shaping your experience at Penn. So this has to very much read like sort of a very symbiotic relationship in all 200 words, so that by the time they're finished reading this, this is the classic feeling that you want them to leave with, you are a perfect fit for Penn, and Penn is a perfect fit for you. This is a marriage made in heaven. And then the conclusion should, of course, say something new. It should not just restate your thesis or restate any part of your body. You should say something new in your closing sentence or two that will leave the application readers wanting more of you and feel like, oh my God, what a reflective, mature young man or woman. Uh, and wouldn't we be lucky to have this individual on our campus for the next four years in West Philadelphia? where Penn is located. All right, so again, I could of course give you much more guidance if we work together one-on-one, -on -one, but that is sort of my primer on how I would approach prompt number two. And then Penn has college-specific essays in the 2023-2024 admission cycle. For the College of Arts and Sciences, the question is thus or this. The flexible structure of the College of Arts and Sciences curriculum is designed to inspire exploration, foster connections, and help you create a path of study through general education courses and a major. What are you curious about and how would you take advantage of opportunities in the arts and sciences? To help inform your response, applicants are encouraged to learn more about the academic offerings within the College of Arts and Sciences at college.upenn.edu slash perspective. This information will help you develop a stronger understanding of how the study of the liberal arts aligns with your own goals and aspirations. And it's really nice that they gave you that link because they're underscoring for the uninitiated that this is not a personal persuasive essay alone. This is a personal persuasive research essay that you need to craft. And yes, you only have 200 words, but you need to be able to bring to the table and therefore the content of this essay proof that you've done your research, that you've done your due diligence, and that you know what you're talking about. And you're not just speaking generally about majoring in history or majoring in Spanish you actually know very well about the actual history curriculum and offerings at Penn. You know very well about the Spanish curriculum offerings specifically at Penn. And you're going to be able to communicate about those in, in very specific detail within your response. So you need to basically write a love letter to the academics that you are interested in pursuing at Penn. And again, you would want to structure it with a one-sentence intro where you introduce uh, and, and also have a thesis, basically, statement as that doubling as that intro, where you explain, you know, the one to two areas that you're very interested in, in pursuing academically at Penn. Uh, you know, the, lay it out very specifically within the College of Arts and Sciences. There are hopefully majors. You could maybe major, mention a major and a minor. Maybe you mentioned two majors. Maybe create a double major and a minor. And most three disciplines would you want to mention in this first introduction sentence slash thesis you introduce them then you in the body need to show uh why you feel as though these particular areas of study at pen would be like a boon to you in your career your your life after pen like why are these and at pen such a, a killer combination for you and again you may be drawing on your past prove it you may you want but you should definitely be painting a picture of what you envision to be your future living and learning at Penn those subjects or that subject uh, and why doing so again at Penn in particular is such a valuable uh, thing for you and, and not obviously you're not going to mention Columbia you're not going to mention Georgetown you're not going to mention Cornell but if you could write any sentence within your response that could be applied to any of those schools you're not getting specific enough with your response to this particular prompt. And then your conclusion needs to, again, share something new, add something new, 
that is sort of like the cherry on top, the icing on the cake, as they say, I like desserts. So again, this could be an opportunity for you to really close the deal with Penn in a way that leaves them wanting just that much more of you. Again, only College of Arts and Sciences students will be responding to that one. If you're applying to engineering, you get this prompt. Penn Engineering prepares its students to become leaders in technology by combining a strong foundation in the natural sciences and mathematics, exploration, and the liberal arts, and depth of study in focused disciplinary majors. Please share how you hope to explore your engineering interest at Penn to help inform your response. Applicants are encouraged to learn more about Penn Engineering and its mission, and they give you a website. Uh, Again, this is you, similar to the one if you're applying to College of Arts and Sciences, you painting a picture of yourself engaging in the academics that exist at Penn, specific to Penn. Again, if you could write this about engineering at Columbia or at Brown, you're not getting specific enough. You need to get specific in, into painting a picture of yourself engaging in, taking out, uh, advantage of opportunities that are unique to Penn engineering and the major or majors you are going to be pursuing within the School of Engineering at Penn. Otherwise, all my tips for the first College of Arts and Science uh, specific essay would apply here, but again, this is going to be flavored by engineering and the opportunities that exist within Penn Engineering. Uh, I'm going to do the Warden one next and then uh, circle back to the nursing one. Warden is the School of Business at Penn. Warden prepares its students to make an impact by applying business methods and economic theory to real-world problems, including economic, political, and social issues. Please reflect on a current issue of importance to you and share how you hope a Warden education would help you to explore it. So they also give you a website where you can research more about uh, Warden's majors. This is sort of framed a little bit differently, but it's basically the same end goal you have in mind, which is painting a picture with words of you at Penn, and specifically you engaging in the life of Warden, giving back to it, and gleaning value added from it. But instead of the approach you would take with the first two, where you sort of have a blank slate to explain why you are interested in those that major, why you're interested in that school at Penn, for this particular Warden one, uh, you need to reflect and build your essay around a current issue. So in the first sentence slash intro slash thesis, you want to be able to introduce in summary, not in depth, but in summary, what is that current issue that is important to you? And also summarize how you think a pen, and specifically a warden at pen, uh, experience for the next four years would help you explore it. That's only a summary, though, so you can't really write a book in the first paragraph or sentence, as it were. It's an intro thesis slash sentence. It, you're going to, though, give the depth that you need to, to uh, bolster your argument in the body. That's where you're going to get into the weeds of why this issue is important to you. You don't really get into that into the first sentence, right? You can, you can start explaining that in the body. You can give the backstory in the context of why this issue, current issue is important to you. And then, again, you really want to dovetail quickly into showing how you feel as though you will be able to explore that issue uniquely at Penn uh, in such a way as to make a real impact, not only at your time at Penn, but after your time at Penn. Well, you know, where do you see your, your warden education leading you after you graduate with a warden de degree? Uh, and, and how will you continue to affect positive change vis-a-vis -vis this particular current issue, uh, not only during your time at Penn, but post your, your Penn graduation? So again, you can do it. It's obviously covering potentially more years of your life, uh, but you still want to center it around showing what specific opportunities exist at Warden that you feel like would make Warden a particularly strong destination for you, for you to explore and reflect on, research, and learn about uh, that current issue uh, that, that really matters to you. Because again, Penn, Warden in particular, that's why they frame the question this way, is very interested in things like ESG and and good governance and morality in business, as of course we know uh, in recent years, uh, both Penn alumni but also non-Penn alumni in the world of business have maybe not been the most moral in their behaviors in the world of business. So Warden definitely does want to sort of frame this question along the lines of being an ethical business person. Um, and anything from your past that can prove you have a particular angle with which to discuss ethics in business could be a good starting point 
but from for you to start really hashing out and fleshing out in your first, second, third drafts of this, how you want to frame the, the current issue that is important to you. And if you can intersect it with ethics in business, good governance, uh, sort of ethical capitalism, if you will, all of those are trendy topics and important topics, of course, as well, that uh, if you can harness, that would be uh, wise. Not all of them, but at least one of them in the context of your response. And then finally, required of nursing applicants only, Penn Nursing intends to meet the health needs of society in a global and multicultural world by preparing its students to impact healthcare by advancing science and promoting equity. What do you think this means for the future of nursing and how do you see yourself contributing to our mission of promoting equity in healthcare? To help inform your response, applicants are encouraged to learn more about Penn Nursing uh, and its mission and how we promote equity in healthcare and they provide you a link. All of which, by the way, I will include as um, all of these uh, prompts I'm going to include below this video just so you can reread them in your own time and maybe copy and paste them to a Google, Google, Google or Word document as you draft out. But of all the four prompts for the four undergraduate schools at Penn, this is the most that reads like a, uh, a loyalty oath, if you will, to a particular philosophy. Uh, and uh, I personally think that's a shame. In order to get the greatest diversity of students, I don't think that you should pigeonhole them into parroting particular philosophical statements. Um, but as you can see, what the nursing school at Penn does very much value equity and in healthcare, and they want you to be able to value that as well if you're going to join the Penn nursing community. So you very much need to explain from a personal perspective how you would promote equity, how you have promoted equity, why you think that's important vis-a-vis uh, -vis the entire future of nursing, but also your unique career uh, uh, in nursing, why you are valuing it today, why you value it tomorrow, and why you will, why you will value it for the remainder of your career. Uh, and you should, of course, point to specific anecdotes or details that exist related to the nursing curriculum, the nursing school itself, at Penn that you feel like you will be able to harness in particular in order to promote equity, not just during your time at Penn, but for the remainder of your career in the field of nursing. Uh, so again, you really still need to paint a picture of yourself engaging in and taking advantage of very particular Penn nursing opportunities that you think are going to be a real value added to you in your quest and your commitment to pursue equity in healthcare from here until infinity in the remainder of your life. I should also just say that in terms of how I would structure it otherwise, same, same approach, one sentence intro slash thesis, one paragraph body, one or two sentence conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis and the body so that you can uh, make sure that every sentence is a value added, says something new, and is not a wasted sentence. And if you draft this out appropriately, which again is why a lot of people choose to work with me in one-on-one -on -one because it's hard to do. I'm not going to say it's easy. But if you draft this out appropriately, there will not be one sentence of any of your essays for pen that uh, are wasted sentences. Every sentence will serve a purpose within each of your three responses to your pen specific essays. And uh, you can rest comfortably knowing after you've hopefully submitted that application early decision that you've given yourself the very best shot of getting into pen. Finally, my tip about interviewing. They're called pen conversation now, conversations now. Uh, but ultimately, these are alumni interviews. You interview with a member of the Penn uh, Secondary School Alumni Committee uh, of, made up of a few uh, past uh, graduates of Penn. And uh, this is conducted virtually for the 2023-2024 admission cycle. In past years, they've been done in person as well. Uh, but I definitely recommend that if you are offered the opportunity to interview, that you take them up on that opportunity. Again, it's done virtually. Most people have an internet connection these days or can get one at their school or a local library. I would definitely take them up on their opportunity to interview. Uh, it's a conversation, like they said, but it's also an interview. And it is evaluative insofar as the person interview, view, interviewing you will be writing up a summary of your interview and how it went and sending that off to the Penn Admissions Committee to review while they review everything else in your application file. So definitely be ready to take seriously your interview 
if you engage in one with uh, Penn and their alumni, represent, an alumni representative of Penn. Many years ago, back in the day, I was in a Penn alumni interviewer myself. And uh, what I will say, and it's wonderful that Penn says this on their website for interviews, is that they definitely encourage you to write a thank you email. And I would encourage you to do that within an hour after the interview. So that if the person hasn't actually written up the summary and sent it into Penn yet, they get the very nice thank you email from you after the interview. Uh, and they remit, they see how courteous you are. And they maybe mention the fact that unlike a lot of people who interview with me, he actually or she actually wrote me a thank you email within an hour after the interview. That that could be included in the summary. And that's always nice because as we heard earlier in the supplement for Penn, Penn admissions officers appreciate people who show thanks and appreciation. So definitely thank your interviewer for sharing his or her free time with you because they are not getting paid to be alumni interviewers. They're, interviewers, they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart because they really do want to help Penn uh, matriculate students who are passionate about Penn and who will keep carrying the banner of Penn high into the future. So definitely thank that person. But all of my interview tips uh, you would want to get by working with me one-on-one. -on -one. I do mock interviewing and prep interviewing, uh, but also I have some uh, interview videos below this video that I have produced in the past that you might want to watch after this one in order to best prepare to make the most of and ultimately ace your interview with Penn if you get invited to one. If you don't get invited to an interview with Penn, that's okay. It's most likely just because they did not have enough alumni to go around and it's not going to hurt you. An interview can only help you. So that is why I said definitely say yes to the invitation to interview if you are given one. Never say no. There's really no excuse to say no. Uh, even stage fright, even massive anxiety is not a reason to say no, because uh, you are not being tested, but you should, in fact, want to have a conversation with a, a member of the Penn alumni community so that you can learn more about his or her experience, so that you can share a little bit about you. Definitely remember to bring your resume that you're putting together for your supplement to that interview as well, or email to that person uh, before your, your um, interview so that uh, they can be uh, fed some softball questions about you because otherwise all they're being given about you is the school you're applying to and your name and your contact information. They're not going to see your full application file. So it's up to you to sort of maybe feed them some softball questions about yourself by sharing with them your resume via email before they even open up that virtual Zoom or Google Meet window to engage in that virtual interview with you for the 2023-2024 admission cycle. So... You can tell I'm passionate about Penn because I went to Penn. I bleed red and blue. And I hope that you will be a future a Penn alumnus as well. I think that now that you've sat through this video with me, it's almost been 40 minutes. Oh, my goodness. I think you have a much better shot if you've really taken to heart what I've had to share and you do everything that I recommend you do. You have now given yourself a very strong chance of being a competitive applicant at the University of Pennsylvania. Again, my name is Craig Meister. If you want to learn more about working with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to my website, collegemeister.com. If you uh, don't have the proclivity to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's okay. Just please like this video, give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and family because maybe it could help them as well or their, their relations or their friends and their family. Uh, not only this year, but in future years, I have a whole back catalog of videos that maybe you're applying to other schools that I could help you with as well. And also just other tips and tricks that I've given through the years in these videos whenever I have some spare time to produce them. So until next time, stay safe and stay well. My name is Craig Meister. And most importantly, I wish you the very best of luck in your quest to get into the University of Pennsylvania.